Hello, 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 and welcome to the channel. I am Alfred Avenue. Um, I'm excited about College Football 25 coming out. Uh, we are just over a month away from the release. Um, there has been a lot of news drop uh, about the game. Uh, I was not able to go, obviously, to <laughs> the EA event um, to see the game and see the release and whatnot, but there were a lot of creators who did, um, and one of the main guys that I watch, uh, not the expert, uh, Drew, I can't remember his last name, Drew Keller maybe, but uh, he was able to go and get the four hours of play now gameplay as well as get a presentation from ea um and i really enjoyed his video so i'm going to be doing a reaction to it i'm um, just kind of uh going through and seeing some of the questions that i had i think he answers pretty well uh, but i want to make sure to give you guys all of that information as well thank you all for tuning in i hope you guys enjoy the video and find it as informative as i did enjoy What's up, everyone? I am not the expert. I played college football 25 early, and to be honest, there's some things in college football 25 that I feel is lacking and has me worried. I'm talking about things in gameplay, Road to Glory, Dynasty, all of it. I will go more in depth later on in this video, but basically EA flew me down to their studio in Orlando, along with other creators and media members. I want to be clear though, I am not here to advertise for EA. I think people are skeptical of what I have to say about the game simply because EA offered me the experience to play the game early. You know, they're putting you up in a hotel, giving you the special experience. So I totally understand that perspective, but I do want to- Also, it's wild for people to think like, people like this are in EA's pocket. Like I understand the the thought process of like, ooh, you got put up by EA, but like not everyone is bought and paid for. Um, and so I think people are weird about that, but whatever. Make it clear that my opinion is my own. I'm not like a bot advertisement. No one is giving me a script of what to say. I remain critical in my feedback because I want college football video gaming to be great. I tell the devs my fears of what could go wrong and what they need to change in the future, which is another reason why I'm going to be critical in this video. There's things missing the mark that has me worried for the game as a whole. And shocker, College Football 25 is not a perfect game and I will explain some things and some shortcomings that I've noticed. While I will share my thoughts, this is not a comprehensive review. It's just early impressions from the presentation they gave us to the creators and about four hours of gameplay experience that I had in play now when down at the studio. There are also things a lot of people are misinterpreting about the game that I want to clarify, especially about wear and tear, road to glory, and dynasty. And there's a huge list of things. Yeah, I was, I'm super worried about the wear and tear system, and I really hope that it's not game breaking like I envision it to be. Um, but hopefully we will get a little bit more information about that and learn, you know, how it's implemented and whatnot. I want to talk about in this video, you can probably see by the length of it. So I'll just run down the list, starting with gameplay. So with gameplay, everyone's initial thoughts is like, does college football 25 feel like Madden? The simple answer is no, I didn't feel that way at all. My experience with Madden gameplay is it's stiff, it's annoying, and just generally not fun to play. No, look, he's frozen again. I can't move. And Madden gameplay has a variety of issues, but I feel the superhuman corners to be like the most annoying. And it seems like contested passes always end up in interceptions. They're like looking the opposite way too, and they just turn around and always snag it. It's just, you know what I'm talking about if you played Madden. It's, it's annoying that way. But with College Football 25, I, like everybody else, was worried, like, is this going to be a Madden reskin is kind of like the main talking point. And before I saw the gameplay, that was going through my mind. Once I got my hands on the game, though, I did not get that sense whatsoever. This really shouldn't be a surprise, but this was, without a doubt, the best the Frostbite engine has ever felt. And that's coming from somebody who has not enjoyed the gameplay experience from every single Madden game on that engine, which is all the more reason why this game seems to get it right. College Football 25's gameplay feels I guess loose is the way I would describe it in a good way. Like it felt like I could run the ball without being suction cupped to the defensive line. You know what I'm talking about. I did not notice any overpowered cornerbacks in my gameplay. 50-50 balls actually felt like a 50-50 and the improved passing trajectory is one of my favorite improvements in the game. It really opens up avenues for all sorts of throws that were completely impossible in past games. I'll give an example. Like a fade route is now a viable option. You could also layer the football in between defenders. It just feels so much smoother. And you also see examples of this in the trailer, like we see the deep ball from Jalen Milrow to the back of the end zone, which is awesome to see that. You can also see this LSU. Yeah, I'm definitely excited to see how 
with the new stuff that they're doing, how it's actually implemented and actually getting into play the game. Um, I know a lot of us are super used to the way college football, you know, NCAA 14 plays. Um, and so I'm going to have to keep an open mind of like, oh, well, 14 did it this way or, you know, whatever. And I think most people are going to have to do that. Um, so definitely going to keep my mind open, but also be critical because that's, you know, that's who I am. And I think that's how games continue to be made well. You throw to the wide receiver on the sidelines, putting it to where only the receiver can make a play on the ball. That's very pretty stuff. I love to see that. I also reacted positively on Twitter in my community post saying that I enjoyed the gameplay experience. And some people seem to not believe me that I'm some like EA shill or something. But come on, guys, when we look at the history between NCAA games versus the Madden games, I think pretty much every case NCAA has had the more <laughs> enjoyable on the field experience than every Madden game. I'll that's absolutely true. NCAA has always felt better than Madden, even in like the career modes. He, and he goes into this uh, in regards to like the off the field stuff as well. Just like managing and playing in Madden just has always felt so tedious. And like NCAA feels loose and fun and like fast paced and like you're like ready to get in the next season. And like in Madden, it took where like a season in, in NCAA, it would take like you could take like an eight hour day and play through a season, but you could get through a whole season in a weekend with your buddy. And then the next weekend they'd be over and you'd play your next season. But in Madden, it felt like just like with all the menu stuff and all the decisions you had to make, it just took forever. So I'm excited to, to hear that he's enjoying the gameplay. I think that's really a hot take either in a lot of cases i would argue the better off the field depth as well like there's For a sure. reason people love ncaa and missed it when it was gone and i'm not saying any of those games were perfect not even close and i'm not saying college football 25 is perfect either but it is light years above of madden 24 in the gameplay since and that's on good. my first initial know. experience i thought the gameplay was damn good but there's a reason it's only initial experiences i only had four hours of gameplay <clears throat> that's not really enough to make a full opinion but drewski quit just gloss Lossing up the game. Let's talk about other things that I noticed. We saw in the gameplay, there are some bugs in there for sure. Like we saw one play where this guy's pants are turning the other color. I can get over that. This was an older build, obviously, that they used for the trailer. And this is not going to be reflected on the final release. At least you hope. Well, plus like NCAA 14, the game we all like love and revere, it has its glitches. Like people like not getting tackled and getting up and running another 40 yards or people like when you flip a play occasionally, like your center will move to like the left guard position or like to the tight end position. And like there are glitches in the game, but it's still an amazing game, you know, the best that it comes. So obviously it's EA, so there's going to be glitches everywhere, but you know, it's good to know that it's a newer, better game hope right but there are some legitimate questions people raised about certain plays in there like these corners doing a quick spin around to intercept the ball or some other players like missing blocks and stuff and for that i'll say this i'm not expecting the gameplay to be absolutely perfect for i sure. obviously don't want things to feel completely unrealistic or out of whack or anything that would like break my immersion but i'm not some maniac expecting this to be a shot for shot recreation of real life football yeah, if that same. makes sense i think in reality a 100 recreation of true life football I don't even know if it'd be that fun. Like, I appreciate realism when possible, but to an extent. Because overall, I just want the game to be fun. Like I said, it's a video game. I could nitpick about whether this specific interaction over here is messy or that block was off. I'm not really interested in breaking any of those things down personally. I feel like my experiences, or I guess not my experience because not the expert. <laughs> But from my view, I feel like I'm best served talking about the features and the depth of the other modes. To sum it all up, I feel College Football 25 gameplay was better than just good best served talking about the features and the depth of the possible but to an extent because overall i just want the game to be fun like i said it's a video game i could nitpick about whether this specific interaction over here is messy or that block was off i'm not really interested in breaking any of those things down personally i feel like my experiences or i guess not my experience because not the expert <laughs> But from my view, I feel like I'm best served talking about the features and the depth of the other modes. To sum it all up, I feel College Football 25 gameplay was better than just good enough, you know? I talked about a few negative things there, but let's talk about some of the promising animations I saw. In my gameplay experience, I immediately noticed the unique throwing animations. They felt fresh. I also liked the skill moves that they showcased in the trailer. But one thing in my personal experience, I liked how the left stick gameplay felt. It felt especially smooth in this game. The simplest way I could describe it is it felt like I could soft juke 
juke, if that makes sense. I could zigzag around players without needing the right stick to like juke, which that gave me some NCAA 14 yeah, vibes in that say, respect. However, that that's enough on- I was about to say that reminds me of NCAA 14. Um, just being able to kind of like do that little hit move um, if your player has like really high agility and good juking, like you could get around players and then beat them to the edge. Gameplay, I want to talk about presentation and then later on, we're going to move to Road to Glory and Dynasty. This is one the of the things I was most excited about. I already talked about, about the scoreboard. I like that. I think most people do. And we even do have some confirmation that records will be under the team names on the scoreboard during Dynasty mode, which is cool. And if you didn't know, there's like college football revamp guys that were hired to be on the dev team for college football 25, which I think is an awesome decision. And you can see influences from college football revamped all over the game. And I can tell just by talking to the devs in the studio that their presence elevated this game massively. Like the team select menu is absolutely beautiful. And when you compare it to NCAA 14, this is an unbelievable upgrade. But I do want to clarify yeah, one question I saw good. on Reddit about these little signs that pop up in team select. These are only cosmetic and are basically just there to show your teams like readied up. Some people thought they were like alternate logos you could use in game, but that is not the case. I do appreciate some little details like in team select, you're able to sort by conferences, which is nice because you used to have to be able to like sort alphabetically, which would take quite. I also noticed there that if you the teams that you put up there, it shows the rivalry if it's a rivalry game. That's pretty cool. Quite a while. I think focusing on quality of life things is a nice touch. I'm glad they're considering that. I felt the menus in this game were massively quicker than in recent Maddens. Like we That's incredibly good to know because if you've played not only recent Madden, but FIFA, the menus in FIFA are just diabolically bad. I think it boils down to the servers, uh, but also just like, bad design um so i'm glad that they brought in the college football revamp folks and hopefully they take kind of like a note out of that book for you know the madden games and the fifa games upcoming we all know the madden menus were so slow and it made the game honestly a chore to play like there's a lot of times i for would try sure. to record content for this game and i would just quit simply because i was bored going in between the menus like not even even making it to the game so i was happy to see that they improved this for college football 25. if i had to speculate i imagine this is a symptom of it being only on next gen consoles instead of like being on ps4 and ps5 no matter the reason i dig it i also want to talk about some other details people might not know about specifically for presentation so in the little like PowerPoint they showed us at EA, they showed us a recreation of like the Mo Bamba at Penn State thing in game. The one that they recreated That's gonna in the game be so was badass. incredible. It was like, absolutely epic. The stadium pulse at LSU. Out. The screen was shaking. I legitimately got goosebumps watching. Swag surf at Auburn. That'll be dirty. Even like when Alabama does their like big old like RT stuff, like whatever. <laughs> And I think everybody else in the room did too. Like, I think I remember turning over to Bengal who was sitting next to me. And I think I said out loud, damn, that was cool. So this game absolutely nails the atmosphere aspect. However, I must state that my headphones at my gameplay station was not working. So when I was playing, Sick I could not EA. hear audio from my <laughs> gameplay session. But even though I couldn't hear anything, the visual presentation of like the traditions, the player reactions, the fans, all of that, like the mascots, everything, it was incredible. And I'm not being hyperbolic when I say this. This is probably the best atmosphere I've ever seen in a football video game. For an example, That's I played awesome. with Auburn, my alma mater. Wiggle, wiggle. I read off the tweet Let's that go, I put baby. out for this, describing my experience. First game in college football 25 was beautiful. I played with Auburn football in Jordan-Hare Stadium. The Dude, atmosphere was the insane. Eagle. First time seeing the Eagle flight, the That's team run awesome. out, the mega video board, which is also the first time we've ever seen that in the video game. Seeing Aubie, the student section, yeah, I true. shed a tear, man. It it's like I was at home with my alma mater. Hashtag War Eagle. Like, seriously, it was truly special. <clears throat> they nailed the details. And as far as my understanding, they did that with all 134 teams in the game. However, they could community noticed some slip-ups there in that gameplay trailer. They said the Red Rival rivalry. You got the, like, fans on the wrong side. You're supposed to flip-flop them. Or how about Texas State, their upper deck? Where is it? It's not there. We all brought up these issues to our contacts at EA. They said they were already aware of these issues, and they had already made the fix before the trailer even went out, which is a little confusing. Like, why would you release the trailer with issues you already knew about in game? I'm not sure. I'm not the one who made that decision, but it's nice to know that they got it fixed, I guess. But another example of like the devs going far and beyond for the presentation is like for Arkansas State. That's exciting to hear that their devs are actually responding and fixing stuff. Whereas like uh, in FIFA, like I watch uh, Run the Foot Market, Nick um, and like Nepenthes and like all those sorts of folks. And like, it sounds 
as if tons of stuff is getting feedback to the devs and nothing happens and they don't hear anything. So the fact that they're actually communicating with the creators is is really encouraging. They got this like waterfall in their stadium, which I didn't even know was a thing, but they got that in game. That's insane detail for like a mid-major school, which shows you they took it seriously for all 134 teams that's in awesome. game. But that's enough about presentation. Let's move on to the modes I am genuinely worried about and the ones I care about more than anything, <clears throat> which is Road to Glory and Dynasty. However, yeah. none of the developer deep dives are out yet. I'm under an NDA, so I have to be careful of what I can talk about. But let's start with Road to Glory. I think a lot of people, including myself, are bummed about no high school and Road to Glory. And people keep making the joke yeah. that, like, how is it a Road to Glory without the road? Which is a funny way to put it, I will give them that. I don't know where people got this from, but there is some misinformation spread around that this is some sort of story mode or something. That is entirely false, I'll tell you why. And I think with Road to Glory, like I said in the title, I am worried, but it's honestly more because I think people are misunderstanding this mode entirely. I genuinely believe the core gameplay loop is better than people think. I know that might be crazy with no high school, so I know you might be skeptical, but I'll explain my thoughts. First off, this game is not heavy on cinematics. It is not a linear story mode like cool. long shot or something. I would Good. describe College Football 25 Road to Glory as gameplay focused with light RPG elements. And from what I can tell, they took elements from NCAA 06, NCAA 11, and NCAA 14 while adding in modern elements like wear and tear and brand exposure, which is basically NIL under a different name. And the three games I mentioned that they got inspiration from were some of my favorite Road to Glory experiences, which is all the more reason why I'm optimistic for this game mode. But I do want to reiterate, no high school gameplay does indeed stink. I think we can all agree to that. And I know people... Dude, so for my first Road to Glory, I am most likely going to be doing uh, a quarterback, the lefty laser, playing with my best friend Ben. Um, he's, he's a left-handed guy, and we always create each other in the game. So definitely going to be creating the lefty laser been jet as my first road to glory it's gonna be fun people really loved having the power fantasy of scoring like eight touchdowns a game increasing your star rating every week and getting offers over time that was fun and i hope they bring that back sometime yeah. in the future the like, i want to be cool. competing for high school state championships that was a good time however that system had its annoyances too yeah, i did enjoy the high school games kind of but for probably but... like a game or two and then that starts to get a little bit repetitive like eight to twelve games before even starting the college career i felt was a little bit too much i think we should meet in the middle somewhere like the high school playoffs i feel like was a good balance but let me know in the comments Home below school. how much high school gameplay <laughs> you want like being able to compete for the high school playoffs i felt like it that added to the lore and like the head cannon for me however i seriously do think that the new system has more potential than you think though especially when we're talking about replayability and role-playing aspects which i'll explain here with the new system we know that you can select between two stars all the way up to a five star and your initial rating will be tied to your star rating so if you're a two star you're 65 overall and you go all the way up the ladder when you're a five star you are a 79 overall out the gate you can also select your recruit interests just like a recruit cool. would be in dynasty Bro, mode you want to care Jason about your proximity to home you want to care about your pro potential your playing time campus lifestyle that kind of thing you want to focus on brand exposure so even though there is no high school gameplay experience there is still a recruiting process like cool. i mentioned you could select your player interest and that will narrow down the teams available i think you would still have the option to commit to any team you wanted but that doesn't mean you will be guaranteed any playing time everywhere for example if you walk on at alabama as a two-star player you will be grinding for a long time to move up the depth chart with the ability to transfer every season it's going to make this road to glory experience feel fresh and new as well like you could start at a small school and you can work your way yeah, up that'll the be ranks cool... of teams while your player progresses so it's going to feel natural That'll be a cool like road to glory if you've ever seen people do it in like uh, football manager or anything like that. Being able to like do a journeyman save where you go and do, you know, start at a really small place with no coaching credentials or anything like that. And then trying to move up into finally getting a job at like Real Madrid and winning, you know, the UEFA uh, Champions League and stuff like that. That'll be a cool thing to do in this game, but with like the smaller schools moving from a mid-major to like a power five.
Sure. So when you're terrible, you can be at a low rated school. When you're mid, you can be at a mid rated school. And when you're elite, you can go to one of those top dogs. So it's like That's a cool. natural progression that feels nice. And I, I don't think we can ever say that in a Road to Glory experience. You usually just choose one school and you're stuck there for eternity. I like change in career modes. However, I am not sure if teams are like recruiting you after you have already signed to a school though. So like if you're looking to transfer in year two, I have no idea if teams are going to be courting you like they did in year one. Is it like an automatic transfer? transfer thing. No clue. Wish I would have paid more attention. But the reason <laughs> I believe that this system is good for role playing and replayability is because in the old system of playing out the high school games, it was a little more difficult to control which star rating you would end up being. Especially True. if you wanted to be like a low star rating player, you'd have to like intentionally stink, which kind of broke the immersion for me. With mm. this system where you like start out by choosing which star rating you want to be, you're going to have the option of role playing cool. whether you either want to have the long grind of an underdog two star recruit or have the immediate power fantasy of a five star right away. And once you are in college, I think the general gameplay loop I saw was actually awesome and I don't see enough people talking about it. The gameplay loop has you managing GPA, health, which is tied to wear and tear, your training, which is tied to XP, and your brand, which is basically NIL. You notice some things I said earlier about this game taking inspiration from older games. NCAA 06 had mini games, and there's other great things from NCAA 06 that I can't talk about here under the NDA, so I'll move on. NCAA 11 had a weekly <laughs> schedule where you had to manage so your GPA. NCAA 14 had Coach Trust, and this game combines some of the great elements from older games that I loved, and it adds in the new elements of wear and tear, brand exposure, and transferring. So let's dive deeper. There's like four bars you gotta focus on with your weekly time. You can be academically ineligible if you don't focus on your schoolwork. Now there is no interactive gameplay for quizzes or tests in the game, but you must keep on top of your studies in a time management sense. Or you won't be seeing the field until you get those grades up, similar to NCAA 11. Like, I became academically suspended in that game for a little bit in one of my Road to Glories. <laughs> not committing time to recovery could put your health at risk as the hits add up over the course of the year. And not committing time to training is going to limit your potential XP gains. And if you completely ignore brand exposure, you're going to be missing opportunities for game-changing sponsorships. I think one of the only examples we know of so far is like you can get like a cryogenic sponsorship That's that'll cool. boost recovery permanently. So these are the RPG elements I was referring to. You can't max out each bar. You have limited time each week, so you're going to have to prioritize each time whatever you deem valuable. And each of the four categories has potential benefits if you focus on it fully and potential punishments if neglected. And I think some people were scared and clung to what was told to them about the 10 to 20 hour experience for this career mode, which to be honest with you, I don't think is anything to worry about right. because when we look at history like the NCAA 14 Road to Glory experience for example I recently did a playthrough of that and I felt like it was about 10 to 20 hours so it doesn't feel any different I think they just want you to know it is shorter than a dynasty experience which who knows how long the typical experience for that takes 10 to 20 hour experience basically tells me they're not trying to waste your time with long cinematics they want you to dabble in the RBG mechanics and they want you to get back on the field playing which I think is the way it should be I for one am happy about this like i don't want long linear cutscenes yeah. with cringy dialogue dude all the like cutscenes and stuff and like fifa and madden and like be a pro dude i'm playing through nhl 24 right now which by the way i've always kind of hated on road to glory and like road to the heisman in ncaa and i don't know why because it's my favorite game i guess i just like I love doing the dynasty stuff and like creating a team and building the team and whatnot versus like being a single player doing that whole, like he said, power fantasy. But anyways, the NHL 24, I've really enjoyed playing it, which I know a ton of people hate it, but I'm not a chill person. Most of the time I just enjoy hockey, like playing a game like that. Anyways, in the, in the be a pro, there's like unskippable stuff that you're just like, come on, get past it. And to hear that there's like tons of these cinematics not in the game is like huge news for me and for like be a, the road to glory stuff. I'm excited to get into it. Blog or weird podcast clips where they're I saying generic vague things about so my player. Like, wow, this guy breaking. is bad. He can get better though. After I threw like 800 yards and nine touchdowns, you know what I mean? That seemed to plague a lot of sports games these days. So them avoiding it here, boom, hats off to you guys. Yeah, Mike that. Straw also reported that text messages and unique events will be in the game that you can respond to and have different gameplay effects. These are not cutscenes, really. I, I would relate these to kind of like, you know, in Madden 08, when they would send you text messages in superstar mode 
mode. No cinematics or anything. So you don't have to worry about it being another forced linear path, but there are like decisions you can make and the random events have consequences, both positive and negative based on your responses. And I think they said there's a little bit of RNG in that. I don't know. I think that is all I can say about that without getting in trouble here though. So we're gonna have to wait for the Road to Glory deep dive on that. But continuing on more in Road to Glory, it was also reported that position battles are now mini game based. Once cool. again, going back to NCAA 06, we see that inspiration. You have to win two out of three mini games against the player you're trying to jump on the depth chart. What I found interesting about these is that you don't have the option to replay these. So if you fail, you don't get to cheese it until you win. Failing has consequences. Another I kind of like that they're adding the consequences to the game because a lot of times, especially in older games, they almost like didn't allow you to like have a chance to like feel the success that you were going to have because you couldn't fail, which was kind of game breaking in the sense that like it took you out of the immersion and you could just cheese the system. Another interesting note here is that other players on the depth chart are also earning coach trust in the background. That's so if cool. you're slipping up, throwing a zillion interceptions and play poorly, you could be benched in favor of the CPU player working his butt off behind you. So hopefully all of this put together, describing Road to Glory more in depth gives you a clearer picture of what the mode actually is. And hopefully you can understand why I am so optimistic for the mode, despite it having no high school gameplay. If you're still not convinced, that's totally fine. This is only my initial impression of Road to Glory. It's not a final review of the mode. So it's perfectly fine to take my thoughts with a grain of salt as I have not played the mode directly myself. It's just my interpretation of what I saw in the little PowerPoint they showed us. And once again, the dev deep dive will be coming later on and that should explain everything more in depth than I ever could. Now let's move on to everyone's favorite mode, Dyna. So like honestly with Road to Glory and with all of the game, I I'm excited. Obviously I'm waiting with bated breath because it is EA, but it seems really, really exciting to like that, that we're getting a new game, that all these features have been updated. And even though some little things, even though they might seem big to some people are being left out of the game, it still seems like they're paying homage to the legacy that NCAA has and trying to move into a new like arena of good things and paying attention to it for the future. Um, with Dynasty, which he's about to discuss, um, obviously the biggest thing that is missing is the cross play to me for online dynasty, which I know they couldn't fit it in cause of time and whatever, but that's like a huge loss. And basically having to, people are having to choose to, am I going to play with my friends or am I going to spend $500 to get a new console to like play with my friends? Essentially like there's, it's kind of like a damned if you do damned if you don't sort of thing. But, uh, that being said, let's jump into the dynasty section here. And that should explain everything more in depth than I ever could. Now let's move on to everyone's favorite mode, Dynasty Mode. And uh, I am also worried about this as well. And I think the things I am worried about are the things that came out that we already know are not in the game. Let's start off with no draft classes. I know, it's unfortunate that it's not there. Understandable, though. I think though. it's not really game ruining for me. Plus, look, most people who are playing Madden are not playing NCAA and most people who are playing NCAA are not playing Madden. Obviously NCAA hasn't existed, but the the people who were playing that game were not playing Madden really. I I bought a Madden like once every 5 years just because I would get in like a kick of okay, I want to play with the Titans cuz I'm from like Alabama and that's the only team close. But like I want to play with Auburn every year. I want to start a like a crappy school dynasty and build them up and and you know, continue to just like build that program and turn it into a powerhouse. I don't care about Madden. And so this not being in there, I understand it is frustrating for people who are either creating content or do play it, but I don't see this as like an integral part of NCAA, even though it could be just because I prefer NCAA to Madden. Anyways, me like I understand EA couldn't put this in the game because of the NFL licensing, right? Moving these players over to Madden, there's some like legal issues, especially now that they're signed through NIL. Back in the day when it was just QB number three, it could have been anybody, you know, wink, wink. 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 But that's also <laughs> one of the reasons why this game went away for 11 years. Like moving them over to Madden, it's a potential lawsuit, which is a reason why it has me fearful that we won't be seeing this feature in future college football video games. And this ties along with massively limited player editing, which which I feel 
field genuinely stinks from a player yeah, perspective. For sure. I think we all understand why with the potential legal troubles here as well. Like players that opted out, like Arch Manning, we can't allow you to create that. We get that. And when I was talking to the devs, obviously they are bummed that they can't give us full customization. They don't want to make it so you can't be changing players' names. But the reality here is that having limited player editing is one of the few reasons that this game can even exist. And after 11 years without NCAA football, I will accept this sacrifice for me to be able to play right now. Obviously, I am not thrilled that we have limited player editing in the game. It makes it extremely difficult from a content perspective. It lowers creativity. And I think this has me more worried than anything because it's like totally out of our control and there doesn't seem to be hope of it coming back. But let me break down more specifically of what I know of what is limited in the editing. We know for a fact you cannot edit opted in players' names. You cannot bring in opted out players' names as well for obvious reasons. I don't think you can edit opted in players' attributes, which is an interesting choice, but I think you can edit their equipment. I and mean, I can't remember, that's but cool. I don't know if you could create a player from scratch, which if that's the case, that would be awful. However, yeah. you can definitely yeah, create a player create in like Road to Glory. And I believe you're able to create a player tough. in Team Builder, which is all I'll the more say, confusing. I so I hope they touch more on the player editing stuff in the Dynasty Deep Dive. But another thing is you can't create yeah. a prospect that's, either, that's which is another disappointing thing about the game. I th it is exciting that they're going to bring it in down the road, but like that's a big part of like just with your buddies, like creating, okay, or in an online dynasty, like, okay, let's create two or three superstars that we all can go after to try and like compete against each other or have each person create a prospect, you know, each team. And then like, we all try to go for them. That creates another level and another layer of competition that I think this is going to cause you know, players to miss out on. I thought this one should have been a no-brainer in the game. Like, why can't I put a generic name on a guy and make him whatever overall and recruit him? You know, what's the deal with that? Why can't I make Will Horton in the game? Unless there's a Will Horton that opted out, you know? You better believe I'm going to be giving them hard feedback on this. I want this back in the game. I will pound the table for create a player if it's not there. I guess one silver lining here is they used machine learning for the player faces in game. So not a single player, as far as I know, was scanned into the game. This, like, AI model used pictures of the players to get a somewhat cool. close to their real life <laughs> counterparts Instead not an exact man. one obviously <laughs> we all saw that quinn ewer's picture the devs described this as generic plus so obviously cool. it's not one to one but it's relatively close i think that'll be a good system for all their games like for fifa and for madden just to because if you haven't if you haven't seen madden 24 like the most recent madden some of their player models are atrocious. They like they do not look like people who should be playing football. I'll just put it that way. So it does kind of make them look like cartoonish versions of themselves, but I think it'll make it more naturally when you fit in all the generic players in there. And I think the best part about this is I am under the impression that randomly generated recruits will be taking data from all the other faces to create fresh ones. I can't really confirm it, but I think there's going to be more varied faces does than we have ever Jordan's seen on? before simply because this model has a huge amount of data to pull from. Now, could this lead to potential weird faces and other issues that we haven't seen before? I have no idea and it's something we should keep an eye out for but in theory all of this sounds pretty cool and i'm open to try new things also a small anecdote i appreciated that the faces that they showed us actually look like 18 to 22 year old kids instead of like balding 30 year old men that we would see from ncaa 14 no disrespected to the old heads out there but they kind of broke the immersion for me from time to time with all and that was the worst. Like, literally everyone looked like an old man and everyone looked like they were just, like, not high schoolers, obviously. Except for the Juco guys. The Juco guys, I understood. I, I wanted those guys to look grizzled, old look like grizzled old men. All that being said, I still liked what I saw from Dynasty Mode. I still need to be careful with what I say here, though. I'll do what I did with Road to Glory and talk about the things that the game reminded me of on first look. However, keep in mind that I do not have gameplay experience with Dynasty. I can only talk about God, the I'm presentation so they showed us game. once again. Uh. And what they showed us, recruiting reminded me of games pre-NCAA 14, I think is a good way to describe it. So you have limited which having it be games pre NCAA NCAA 14 is good and bad because there was a lot of good stuff they did in 14 but there were a lot of complaints of 14 when it came out like you guys removed this or you took out recruiting in this way recruiting is completely new like there's a whole lot of stuff that got changed in 14 that people were you know clamoring for from 
06, from 11, from uh, earlier games. So it, it will, it'll be interesting to see. Limited time each week and you can make pitches. The pain, I think, is a good way to describe it. So you have limited time each week and you can make pitches to players. Like you can send a player a DM, you can send the house, that kind of thing. So not the point system from NCAA 14. Which I, like I can't really speak system, to how but... any of this feels because I haven't played the mode myself yet. But my fears that I brought up to the devs just seeing it in theory is, is this going to be tedious? Is it going to take a long time? And they said, no, it shouldn't because they said it was basically quote unquote quote, set it and forget it most of the time. Which, However, I do it's like tough for me to get a read recruiting. on this because at first glance, it seems like if you want to maximize recruiting, you will still need to put in the effort each week, which I can't really put an estimation on how long that would take, but we thought it would take longer than NCAA 14 just on first glance, but I can't really confirm that. But moving on, the transfer portal, it seems like it's going to be a nice feature in this game. It's being slotted in at a specific time near the end of the year, cool. so it should add a fresh addition to recruiting that we've never seen before. And there's some cool tidbits in there. So like recruits will remember the progress you made on That's them from really their cool. initial high school recruiting. So a I also like the fact that they're adding it in as like a separate section. Like if you've played football manager, like transfer deadline day has its own like 10 hour period that like represents the last 10 hours of the entire transfer window, uh, which which adds a cool like little bit of uh, extra immersion into it, which I, which I, I'm glad that they're doing that here. Transfer portal player will remember if you were number three on his high school board and you will get an edge in transfer portal recruiting That's because cool. of that in the future. So there is an incentive to stay within the top three of a guy, even if you're not necessarily going to land him in year one. It could pay dividends later. And I like small details like that. It yeah, makes that it kind of cool. fun. And this is why I'm hopeful for this game mode, despite all the disappointing lack of player editing. If they nail the small details, this mode should be awesome. And visually, I will say the menus look pretty sweet. I I can't elaborate like in like any further, 10. but you'll see it when the Dynasty Deep Dive comes out. I'll quickly touch upon the skill tree stuff. It looks like the deepest skill tree we've ever seen it comes out. I'll I menus look pretty sweet. I can't elaborate any further, but you'll see it when the Dynasty Deep Dive comes out. I'll quickly touch upon the skill tree stuff. It looks like the deepest skill tree we've ever seen in a college football video game. I can't really break it down much more than that, but it seems to be they're going to be pushing us to different play styles to more than just filling up the recruiting page. We'll see how that actually plays out in game, but I'm excited to try out something new. And also, I felt like <clears throat> just on my initial impressions that coordinators are going to play a bigger impact than before because you can't maximize every mm. tree so what you're bad at the coordinators can lift you up that's a huge departure from the previous game where you could literally just you know fill every part of the recruiting tree and then have your offensive coordinator and defensive coordinator like max level and stuff like that so that'll add some cool strategic elements to the game um i trust myself for like recruiting stuff but like, and I typically fill the recruiting tree before I fill the gameplay tree because I trust my gameplay more than I trust, um, you know, but anyways, I trust my gameplay because I play basically football. I don't, I don't go and do crazy stuff and it helps, you know, throughout the games to maintain momentum and whatnot. But um, this is a really interesting wrinkle um, in what will help add more strategy to the game what they're good at you can fill in the gaps with your own skills that kind of thing again all of this will make more sense in the dynasty deep dive also i can't speak to the simulation engine i know a lot of people have questions about that which obviously could make or break this mode which is why i'll need to wait until i can get some deep hours into this game to give a full review until then i can't have a full opinion on dynasty mode and other small things dynasty mode has things you would expect from real life like the 12 team college football playoff cool. which is coming to college football this year we're actually going to be seeing it in game before we see it in real life which is going to be weird but i think that's all i can say about dynasty mode right now i should move on before i get in trouble now <laughs> let's move on to a feature that seems to have a lot of people worried but i'll do a reverse on you i'm not actually worried about this feature like at all i actually think it has tremendous potential if tuned properly of course and that oh. is wear and wear and tear this is the thing i'm most nervous about but he does a good job of explaining it and easing my worries i'm less worried after watching this video enjoy tear 
People seem to be afraid of this feature. I understand that the Madden fatigue system has left a bad taste in people's mouths. Because I hated it too. Like half your starting lineup shouldn't be off the field with no explanation after just like a couple of plays. That's like not a fun gameplay experience at all. It doesn't really make any sense. However, everyone seems to be fundamentally misunderstanding wear and tear from my perspective. And there's a reason I think wear and tear has potential to be game changing and one of the best features we've ever seen in a football game period if done right. And I'll explain why. Yeah, Many people the incorrectly believe me. wear and tear is a fatigue system. It's not. In their heads, they are fearful of their players constantly getting hurt and leaving the field all the time. And I can assure you this is not the case either. First off, wear and tear is only a physical damage system, meaning that only <clears throat> contact with other players will have an impact on your player's wear and tear. Fatigue is a completely separate system. That is only a conditioning system. That is impacted by exerting more energy on a given play. So let's say you have a scenario where your running back runs for 40 yards, but you are completely untouched by the defense and you run out of bounds. This will have no impact on your wear and tear because you weren't touched. It will impact your fatigue since you ran farther. Obviously, like moving at all will impact your fatigue. And we know that skill moves will use more energy too. However, let's change the scenario. Let's say your running back trucked three guys in the process of that 40 yard run. This will impact your player's wear and tear because you were taking contact from other players. But this does not necessarily mean your player is going to be injured. When I spoke to the lead gameplay dev, I mentioned my fears of, is this going to be players getting hurt all the time? Are people going to be annoyed with this feature? He said, this system does not increase injuries necessarily. And I'll explain further. The scenarios where your players are getting hurt are only if you're like being reckless and constantly ignore the warning signs. The lead gameplay dev was like, injuries are kind of like normal in the RNG sense. So like you can still have the fluke injury every now and then, but none of it is more than usual. The punishment wear and tear mainly inflicts is not injuries, but it is the attribute downgrades to specific body parts. That's cool. Let's say your quarterback throws 50 times a game, throwing the ball a lot. This has no impact on wear and tear and fatigue. Your arm's not going to get more tired if you're just throwing the ball. However, if your quarterback is getting hit on these throws, it will impact him obviously because he's making contact with other players. Let's say a lot of those hits are on his throwing arm. That could lead to attribute downgrades, specifically in throw power and throw accuracy, which in that case, it makes sense to my brain. Getting hit one time does not mean your players are gonna need to leave the field though, but there is a consequence of the hit. Basically think players getting banged up slowly over the course of the which game. Makes so like sense. I said, it's not like constantly off in the field opinion. and always injured. That would be annoying as crap. I would not like the feature if that was the case. I think that this system really wants to encourage players to have smarter, safer gameplay styles like a real coach would recommend real life players do. But what does this look like in practice? Some examples of trying to be safe is sliding with your quarterback. That's a good idea to avoid hits. Throwing the ball away to avoid sacks. Running the ball out of bounds to avoid contact. And the dev told me directly as well, using the right bumper to protect the football before taking a hit will lower the impact of the hit on the ball carrier. So in my head, I kind of find this to be awesome because of Yeah, and I see this as like giving you an advantage for playing football the way football is kind of meant to be played versus like something I think we've all done at some points, which is have a scrambling quarterback who's got really powerful arm, low accuracy, just rolling out of the pocket, taking huge hits with him and throwing the ball or just running with him and not sliding uh, into contact or away from contact and then having him get hurt. Essentially this, I think, gives you the attribute like downgrade but also potential injuries that punishes kind of crazy play which will be interesting to see how people adjust to if the system is tuned properly it really pushes you to play That's realistic thing, football and there's it. still a path to play like derrick henry barreling into players if you want <clears throat> however there are specific abilities yeah, that you probably want the abilities are what make the difference there of like allowing you to play differently so like having a quarterback that has like some of those ones that allow you to take more hits or run better, I think will like make it a, a, an interesting system to incorporate. To protect yourself against wear and tear to make that play style viable. But if you- Abilities are the like marriage with wear and tear that allow it to be like a usable system and to balance it well. Hopefully things will be broken like things are in 
playstyle pluses with FIFA. But anyways, I'm gonna run it back. Yeah, you'll probably play like Derrick Henry barreling into players if you want. However, there are specific abilities that you'll probably want to protect yourself against wear and tear to make that play style viable. But if you have like a yeah. super skinny, skin and bones quarterback trying to truck linebackers <laughs> twice his size, there's gonna be some obvious consequences. Like in past games, you can be reckless and scramble all around if you want. And like, it was only a fumbling risk. Right. Now there's attribute punishments for being reckless. Another attribute downgrade I know specifically of is if your legs get damaged, they have potential to lower change hmm. of direction and acceleration, which, which also makes, makes sense. sense to my yeah, head. Like if your legs sure are sore, sense. you won't be as quick as when you're fresh. Right. The attributes tying them to each body part, it feels logical, which yeah. is another reason this system has me really intrigued. Of course, I only have a small sample size and a few play now games, and I didn't notice a massive impact necessarily in the games we played. It seems like this system is designed more for the yeah, longer the, playthroughs and like Road sense. to Glory and Dynasty. So over the course of the season, it is something to monitor. And I find that this system wants players to have a balanced play style by not spamming the same play. They want you to spread the ball around. And if you really want to be on top of it, get your players some rest, get some reps for your backup every now and then. And the ways to recover your player's health with wear and tear, you can take your player out of the game, rest him for a few plays, calling timeouts will give some recovery. At halftime, he'll get some recovery and in between weeks. But if you hated everything I said sense. about this system, you still don't want it. I think there's a setting to turn it off. But seriously, I don't think you should be worried about it making everyone more injured. That doesn't seem to be what it's meant to be at all. But plus, I think the wear and tear system like is realistic in regards to like how football happens. And, you know, your starting quarterback gets hurt and you get a cool storyline of like your backup quarterback coming in and and doing a great job and leading the team to victory, which I think adds more depth and immersion and potential strategic um choices that you have to make throughout the season especially in like a competitive league like an online dynasty it could add a lot of a lot of depth to it i'm excited to see it there are some stories of like a quarterback like having his overall lowered by like 40 points or something i did not witness this with my own eyes this is an anecdote from somebody else i don't know what kind of gameplay experience he was doing but if it's like out of control and tuned poorly then it could be a bad system but i don't think i noticed it in my that's gameplay my experience fear. and finally i want to talk about abilities so my initial fears for abilities were I didn't want them to be like mad next factors. Those literally broke the game by hard forcing an outcome, which is kind of stupid. My fears yeah, quickly vanished agreed. though when the devs assured me that abilities in College Football 25 have no guarantees. I like that they these made that are very, chance -based. very clear. Very these are probably situational based. stat boosts, and these yeah. can be lost entirely if a player gets cold. I like I that think a it's lot. closer to something like 2K badges. So starting at bronze, going up to platinum, you can't earn a certain tier unless you have a high enough attribute anyway. So basically it just means like if you're a good player you're gonna be playing like a good player like <laughs> kind of like your attributes i am hopeful for abilities they look pretty fun i would say my only fear with them is i would hope they don't completely like gatekeep animations if that makes sense well and honestly like i feel like these abilities and stuff were in the game but they were hidden in the code essentially they weren't necessarily like uh, well they obviously weren't like I think these these abilities have always been in the game. Like you look at some players who were just run through you as a running back and you just can't tackle them or they would just, you know, spin out of every tackle or they would just juke the jock strap off of you. I think it's always been in the game. They're just bringing light to it now and adding like a name to it. So it's a feature essentially, which is cool. I'm, I'm like cool with it. Having understanding why a player is running over me makes you less angry at the game when you see oh okay this guy has the truck stick ability or whatever the heck it's called versus just being like why is jesus playing for you know georgia this week i don't want everybody to be able to do everything i just like i said uh, they said it was only a stat increase and not an ability thing but we'll see if that's true in the actual game i can't really confirm that but that's all i have to say about abilities right now and there's obviously still massive amounts of information to come about this game. I'm excited for it. So if you want to hear more in the upcoming weeks from all the dev deep dives, like we're, we still got to talk about Road to Glory presentation, Dynasty, all of that good stuff. So if you want to stick with me and learn more. Well, cool. Thank y'all so much for uh, for tuning in. Um, I'm still super excited about the game. I think Drew did a great job of explaining a lot of the intricate details that he's like allowed to share um, to kind of ease those concerns and worries that I had. And hopefully this video will help ease some of your concerns and worries. I know it's kind of a long one, but thank you so much for watching. Um, if you haven't already, you should go check out his content. I'll link 
fact, I'll link this video below. Um, you should definitely subscribe to his channel. Um, he has a lot of really good, like fun content uh, to watch, lots of cool cuts and stuff. But anyways, I'm excited about the game. I still have concerns. The balancing for wear and tear, I think is gonna be the biggest thing for me. Um, and then a lot of the other concerns, I think they'll address in future years. I'm just hoping they're not putting all their eggs in this game to get everyone back. And then just going into doing the EA thing, which is reskinning last year's game as the new one. I really like that they had a two-year uh, cycle on this one um, and were able to like bring in the people from College Football Revamp and really show the pageantry, the tradition, all behind each of the colleges. Super excited to get into the game. Obviously, um, I'm sure all of you are. But yeah, thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed what you saw, please feel free to leave a like on the video. Um, and if you want to see more in the future, please subscribe down below. A lot of you are not subscribed, and I would love to, uh, to see all of you subscribe so you can get more of these videos in the future. Thank you so much. See ya!